How are you? Welcome to my kitchen again. I found what I wanted because today we're going to do molded meals. Not moldy, I didn't say that, molded. I know that most of us in our time, when we think of molded food, think of fruit gelatins, oh, uh, with sliced pears and canned cocktail sauce, bleh, or canned cocktail fruit. I'm not talking about that at all. Uh, I detest those things. I think that's toy food, and I don't want you to do that. I want you to talk about molded foods. Well, look at these beauties that were typical of uh, Chicago during the 1890s. Look at them. Can you imagine going to a buffet like this? Uh, th this one, this one just kills me. I can't believe it. I wouldn't want to cut into that. But you can do these if you're willing to spend some time in preparation and the advantages for entertaining uh, that at the last minute you're free. You take them out of the refrigerator, unmold them, let your guests come in the door and have a field day. Let me show you my favorite molds. You recognize the simple ones, right? Uh, the little bread pan or the big bread pan. No big deal. Or timbales you can use for molding uh, food. They're served upside down, you see. Those are simple. And, of course, the springform pan. You have these sitting around your house. These are common. And that'll make a nice pattern on the top of the food. It's served this way. Whoops, I don't have the right top on there. I've got a different one. Doesn't matter. And this is called a Charlotte mold from, um, from France. And they're served, again, upside down, full of uh, something I call, uh, you know, close to a, a brown betty, a baked brown apple betty. Or is it apple brown betty, ba whatever it is. Anyhow, you can use those. And then we have uh, this kind of mold for, for uh, pâtés and, uh, and uh, casseroles, you see, that you can gel, and they'll sit up, and then you serve them upside down. Those are fun. Then we have, this is a classic and a great treasure, and I'm very sorry to tell you that I broke this in the mail. I shipped it from, Chicago, from uh, Tacoma to, to uh, Chicago, and the poor heart, it arrived all broken, so I glued it back together, and I can never use it again. Here's, it's dull. It should ring. This is a Kugelhoof, Kugelhoof mode, a crown cap from Germany. And you make a beautiful cake in this. Or you can mold all sorts of things. And when it's served, it's very, very dramatic with all of these ridges. It's fun to put food in these molds. It's just great fun. And I have some uh, English molds. For instance, this is a, these are all pudding molds. This is an old one from England. You see the ridges? And then I have these, these kind of standard old English molds for making puddings. You put the pudding in and then seal this, then it sits in a pot of hot water, and you make suet puddings and that sort of thing. You have them all different sizes. Incidentally, Hall, Hall China is making these again, the old English style. And I just think they're gorgeous. They've got a great big one, too. I don't know what you'd put in there, kind of elephant roast or something. It's gigantic. All right, we'll move these and show you some others. Then from England, uh, you can also find, if you go into antique shops, you can find glass molds. These are beautiful things because the top has such an interesting pattern. You see these? Let's see, I have a fourth one, third one here. I shipped all of these from, uh, from uh, old European antiques in Tacoma. We have a big warehouse, and he brings this stuff in all the time. It would be great to put big olives in each one of these. I've done that for some of them. We'll, we'll look at, take a look at them. All right, the other thing you need when you do this sort of thing is a can of, of, of uh, Pam. I almost said spam. I don't want spam. Molded spam? <laughs> Let's try that. No. Uh, I have a can of spam, and you spray everything so that it'll come out. In the old days, of course, you didn't have spam, or Pam. We had spam. I remember that. But we didn't have Pam, so it was much harder to do this. But these are easy. All right, and finally, the classics. Now, we're talking bucks, dears. We're talking bucks. These molds uh, are classic English molds, but they're made in Turkey. This, this one is, these are very expensive. We're talking about a lot of money. But you see the quality. You'll have these forever. It's very, very thick copper. And you'll notice that they're not, they're not a cheap copper, or a cheap tin electroplate. These are copper wash. You can see where the, where the, where the tin wash has uh, kind of rippled when he threw it in. He pours in a molten tin and swishes it around with his hand in a big asbestos glove. It's, it, you burn yourself on every one, but they're beautiful. They're English, but they're made in Turkey. And they're, the set, look at them all. They're, they're just, oh, I love them. I just love them. But I'm telling you that you're, you're talking about a lot of money for these. Let me put some of these away, and uh, I'll show them to you as we go along this morning, because I want to mold several of them, okay? 
Do I have some other molds here? Oh, my favorite, my favorite, my favorite, my favorite. Uh, I have a mold that I bought in New Orleans. Here, take a look at this one. Bought this in New Orleans at a, at a uh, very inexpensive antique shop. And it's, it's Limoges. It's Limoges. You see how many times it was used? It's a melon mold. Limoges porcelain from, uh, from France. Ten bucks in New Orleans. If you haven't been in New Orleans to eat, go. If you haven't been in New Orleans to look at the antique shops, go. If you haven't been in New Orleans at all, go. You'll love it. Now, end of the copper molds. Let's get on with it. The first thing we want to talk about today uh, is a uh, mold. There, we have enough room now. Uh, if you're going to mold fruit things, for heaven's sake, do something interesting. Please don't use stuff out of a package. Yuck. Uh, I suggest, see if I can figure out which mold I used. Uh, yes. I put a, um, a watermelon mold in this one. You simply add gelatin to your fruit juice uh, and then let it set up. And this is watermelon juice. Fresh watermelon. No seeds. Isn't he gorgeous? Look at him wiggle. Uh, the kids will love this. And it's, it's fine eating. It's very delicious. And it's not a flavor that they would normally find. I'll show you another one now. The next most common thing that we will do with molded food uh, is probably the old, uh, uh, oh, I've got to put an ice cream mold in the refrigerator. I want to freeze some ice cream for you. Make a bomb. No, it's not going to go off. It has no fuse. You don't have to worry about it. Which one will we choose? This will do us, I think. No, let's try this one. No, that's too small. This is the one we want. Let me freeze this. I want it cold now so we can do this together. Excuse me. And then we will, uh, so you've got, to, you've got to chill your mold or the ice cream will not stick to the sides. And we want to put two colors of ice cream in that one. I can hardly get around here today. I've got so many things. I love it. All right. Now then, we will go on to um, the next most common kind of food that you'll uh, cook. It's simply in an old ring mold. And these are easy to do. I've pressed some rice with cheese and ham and uh, some seasonings into a mold. Baked it for a time. And it, it really dresses up a buffet. After all, let's, uh, let's face it. We don't want our buffet to, to look dull and boring. And this is a great way of kind of saving the table. I need a platter. Here it is. Now you're going to say, let's see if we can get it out, huh? Well, I hope so, too. We'll see if I can get it out. I dropped my hot... Oh, oh God, just a second. There. Now we'll flip this over. You see what I'm doing? We'll just flip it over and give it a gentle tap. Be careful, because I've got it on glass. And let's hope it comes out, huh? Here we go. Guess what? I'm in luck. Isn't that gorgeous? We need some um, parsley and some garnish, so we'll do that now. And we have the first one. Easy to do, and you've done it before. What I'm saying is that you want to dress up the buffet while you uh, try molding things. And you have them in the oven, and they're all ready at the last minute, and uh, just put them out, okay? Put it out along with our, our uh, watermelon, our watermelon mold. There, now we're gonna get a little more complicated. I want to show you some beauties. This one I just love. It's a chicken and avocado mold. You'll enjoy it. Into our food processor, we're going to place two cups of cooked chicken. Now, I've cooked this by, uh, do you remember in my cookbook, uh, we talk about Chinese uh, boiled chicken, and it's very, very moist. Well, that's what I want. Two cups, one, two and a half, no, one and a half, that's two cups, that's plenty. Two cups of chicken, cooked chicken, but, but keep it moist, for heaven's sakes. Then we only need two ripe avocados. Let me cut those up right now, and we'll just scoop them out. If the avocados are good and ripe, you'll have a color here that's just wonderful. There it is. Oh, these are good and ripe. We'll just scoop it right into the, to the pot of chicken in our food processor. If you twist an avocado, if you have trouble getting avocados open, you can't pull them, you see. You're going to break it if it's in. Just give it a little twist like this. Just, just twist it, you see? And it'll come right open. That way you won't have, uh, still have the problem with the pit. You just pop it out. No, I'm not going to plant these. Yes, I do have an avocado seed in our house growing. Yes, it's been there for years and years, and it's gigantic. But I, I've given up on trying to plant these. Everyone in the world seems to be able to grow these but me. So don't even ask me about it. Into the machine we go. Two avocados. Whole. And we'll scoop that out. Don't put any peel in, for heaven's sake. You'll, not only will it be bitter, but you will darken the, uh, you'll darken the mixture. We don't want that. This lovely light green avocado is such a gorgeous color. There we are. And one more. When I, uh, when I think of the wisecracks my sons used to make about molded food, because they go to a lot of houses where people, how will I say this? Um, 
We do not eat a run-of-the-mill diet in our house. The kids uh, eat very well, and when they go to a house that uh, and, uh, the mother doesn't bother to cook, she simply serves a molded jello and some macaroni and cheese out of a package. Channing comes home and gives me a full report. On the other hand, when, when kids come to our house and eat, they go home and give a, their mother a full report. Mommy served pressed tongue. Can you imagine? I really liked it. I was surprised, you see. I love to do that to the neighbor kids, and we do all the time. Okay, to our, our uh, mixture now of chicken and, and avocado, we're going to add uh, one cup, excuse me, I'm going to add um, two cups of chicken broth and two envelopes of Knox gelatin. Now, you just buy this in a box. Don't buy the flavored stuff, you see. I want just the, just the little stuff. You, you've seen these. They're all over the place. So we need a saucepan. I'm not going to have time to warm this up, but you dissolve it on the stove with two cups of... Um, of chicken broth, and that will go into the osterizer too, or the food blender. It's not an osterizer at all, excuse me. That's what we need. Okay, two cups. You heat this over the heat. This must be warm, yeah, good enough to, uh, to um, well, not, not burn your finger. You don't want it to boil, and you don't want it to come to a simmer. You simply want to melt the gelatin, but if it isn't good and warm, the gelatin's not going to function. All right, we will pretend now that this is good and warm. And we'll put that into our, into our mixture here. There we are. Chicken, avocados, two cups of broth, and two cups of gelatin. Two envelopes of gelatin, rather. Now, I need a half a cup of sour cream. This gets involved, doesn't it? I love it. One half cup of sour cream. There it is. Lay down in there, for heaven's sakes. And then we need to add half of a yellow onion. And I have mine already cut up. You getting all of this, or am I going too fast? Two cups of chicken. Two avocado, half of a yellow onion, two cups of chicken broth in which you've dissolved two envelopes of gelatin. Now we're going to add the juice of half a lemon. Wait till you see this. It's worth the effort. Worth the effort. Besides, it's fun to cook beforehand. I don't want you cooking when your guests arrive. That's, uh, that's too much work, you know? All right, juice of half a lemon and a little bit of salt and pepper. And we're ready to grind it all up and throw it into a mold. Salt and pepper, just a bit to taste, you see? Okay, now, where is my lid? Here we go. I've got sour cream all over the place. I wonder if that's gonna go down. There, there it is, there it is. All right, away we go. The color. There we are. Just about done now. You want this very fine, very fine indeed. You see now how it's thickening? You see that, it's thickening up beautifully. What a noisy thing. Now, I'm going to use my antique um, uh, porcelain mold from France that I bought in beautiful New Orleans. So much fun. Here it is. Now, don't forget to use the old pan because you'll never get this thing out. Well, it'll be harder to get out. You'll break your mold. You don't want to do that. So we'll spray it. There we are. Put this in the refrigerator. And we're set. Now. Look at the color. Look at the color. Isn't that gorgeous? Isn't that a lovely color? Wait till you see it set up because it'll have ridges on it like an like a actual melon. All right, I have to bang this a bit now. I'm not trying to break my mold. What I'm trying to do is to get the bubbles out of the bottom. There are no bubbles. I've seen nothing pop. Okay, that one's done. Let's put it in the refrigerator and I'll show you what you get. I'm not going to put it in all the way, but here we are. When I take one out, when you take this out of the refrigerator, isn't that gorgeous? 